Right, welcome back. Today we're looking at polar array. This time we're going to apply it to a little bit more practical you know, mechanism or drawing that you might see in the actual real world involving mechanical engineering. So we're going to make this gear. And don't let it scare you. I know it looks a little tricky and like there's a lot going on here, but we're going to break it down into smaller pieces. So first, uh, let's first take a look at these center lines here. So you can see this blue cyan line, and that's where these circles are going to be distributed around. So it says 0.18 diameter circles, and there's 35 of them. Let's find this one where it says 5.2. That's the size of this blue cyan colored circle that goes all the way around. And notice these aren't straight edges here on the side. So this also has a curve of 5.65 and 6.1. So it looks flat, but the radius is so large, or because the radius is so large, it appears to look flat, but there is actually a small curve in there. The width of this tooth is 0.2, and you can see the size of all these other dimensions over here and the spaces between this. Okay. All right, so the first thing, well, actually, I'm going to bring this off to the side so I can still look at it. There's a couple different ways you can actually create this, so I'm going to kind of piece this together, and you might find better ways or shorter ways or another way that you might like. Uh, but make sure you're working in a standard CAD template, and before you do anything, maybe be sure to do a save as. A save as, there we go. To your tech CAD folder. Make sure you're putting this into your new array folder you created the other day and call this A3 with your last name. A underscore three underscore. So be consistent about how you're saving these for organization. All right, so our first one, our first thing here, let's see. I'm going to start making out all those construction circles. So the construction circles are just going to be these center line circles. So let's see, this first one we got, I'm going to make a diameter of 5.2. Yeah, let's do that one first. Yeah, 5.2 diameter. I'm going to change my layer first. This is a layer we haven't used yet. It's called CEN Center, and that's going to change the layer of it. Don't ever touch these over here, the bilayer. Leave those alone. But you notice now, when I draw these circles, it does a dash. This is just a standard in technical drafting for you know, a centerline layer, something that shows uh, something that may be um, fall along the same line or the center of an object. Okay, so first we have that, and then I'm going to create the small circle, this 0.18, at the very top quadrant of this. So I'm going to change this back to viz, the very top quadrant, make sure that is on, 0.18. If your quadrants are not on, be sure to go down to your O-snap and make sure that you have this one, quadrants. Okay, so I have 0.18 at 35 times. So that's simply doing a polar array. I select my object, I hit enter, and then the center is going to be based around the very middle here. It brings me into the array creation mode, and I have 35 items that are based around 360, and that is it for that part. Okay. Now I'm actually going to focus on, let's make the gear shape. All right, so let's see. So let's do, we have a diameter of 6.1 and 5.65. Find the middle. 5.65. And was that 6.1? Yeah, 6.1. And they all share the same center. So let's focus on making the gear tooth. So we have those two rings, that's the inner part and the outer part, and our gear teeth are 0.2. I'm going to draw this at the top though, since all these are 0.2 all over the place, it would be easiest if I just draw this very top one though. So we have a width of 0.2. Alright, so to get that, I'm going to draw, let's see, I'm actually going to do a construction line. Let's do that. So an XL vertical. I'm going to snap that to the quadrant, or I can do the center, it doesn't matter. And since my full width of this gear is 0.2, I'm going to do an offset of 0.1, which is half. 0.1 that way, 0.1 that way. Then I can use my trim tool. Oops, TR for trim. I'm going to select this as a cutting edge. I can get rid of all that. I'm going to select those two as a cutting edge. Hit enter to get rid of all that. I need to get rid of all this. That I can delete. And I could trim this out now, I can trim it later. I'm going to leave this here for now, though. So now I can actually just do a polar array of these three little objects. Hit Enter. 
This is my center point, and I believe there was 50 teeth, the drawing said. Check to be sure. Yeah, 50 gear teeth. Okay, so there's your 50 teeth. Close the array. All right, so you'll notice all these are all one. So if you make a mistake, you actually have to go back and edit the source one. Uh, but let's just be sure that we do it right the first time. That's a whole nother lesson messing with the array edits there. Okay, but we do need to trim all these around. So I'm going to do a trim, hit enter twice, and I'm going to click all these in between. I'm actually going to pause the video because you don't need to watch me trim all these out. All right, so I'm now done trimming. I can actually delete this stuff out from down here. All right, so now we have pretty much the basic shape here. The next step we're going to look at is placing, let's do, let's do these four circles first. So we have, they are separated 1.3 from the center, 1.3 from the center down here, and they are 0.55 diameter. So first we need to find intersections of where these are going to be placed at. And we're going to use a construction line that is vertical, snap to the center, and then another one horizontal, again, snap to the center, a midpoint of that. And we're gonna do offsets. So I'm gonna do offset, and then put in my distance of 1.3, I hit enter. I'm gonna go left, right, up, and down. So what I did was create four intersection points for those circles to be placed. And they were again, 5.55. So I'm gonna select my circle diameter, 0.55, hit enter. Now, since AutoCAD remembers your last command, since so the last one I did was circle, I can actually just hit enter again to repeat it, put in the set next spot, and it knows that I did 0.55 the last time, so I'm going to hit enter again, click, enter, enter, click, done. So I can actually just delete all these. I don't need those anymore. All right, so the next step, let's focus on these center ones. So I have a center of 0.78 and this one of 1.9. Point seven eight, and then I have another one of 1.9. So this one is actually around a construction line or a construction layer. So I can just select it if I already drew it, and I can just put it on center. So you can change these later. You don't need to erase it and redo it. All right, so then my other small circle there then is what? These little guys, we have 0.29, and there are eight of them. 0.29. Polar array. Select the image. Around the center. There are eight. All right. So next, oh, I think we're done. So that's pretty much everything except for doing dimensions and the center line. So here's something that we have not done yet. Notice there is a center mark in each one of these circles. We're gonna start making this a standard from here on out that we're always putting these center lines in anything that is uh, cylindrical shaped or circle shaped. So, and that represents it pretty much tell the reader, tells the reader this is something that is round or arc shaped. Okay, so to get that first, I'm gonna put this on center layer and we're actually gonna go out of our home tab for the first time and go into annotate. Just like the annotate tab. And we just have this simple button here that says center mark. All I have to do is select that Select each circle, not every circle, just these particular ones. And then I hit enter, and there they are. So you can see if you do make a mistake or something's not correct about it, if you select it, the whole thing selects, which is nice. And you can delete it into whichever. Okay, and there's also one you're gonna notice, a really large one that's in the very middle. So we have this big one, and there's a smaller one that's there in the center. So here's the difference. If I select center mark and I just select this, it just puts a crosshair only in that circle. But since we have a couple concentric circles, meaning this circle, this circle, this circle, and those actually all share the same center. So what we're going to do a center mark. I'm going to choose the outermost arc, which is going to be this line. I know it appears like it's flat. We know that's arcs. So we put that in there. It's going to put in one that's going to take up for everything. So there's no, there's no need to select each one of those separate arcs or circles. So that part is done. All right, so let's see, are we good for center marks? Yes, yeah, so now we can start to place our dimensions. Only a few different things that we've done about dimensions, or done for dimensions here, uh, is pretty much just this one, which is called an aligned dimension. So I'm going to go back, I actually can stay here and annotate if I wanted to, where it says linear. 
So if I select a linear for here and I go from here to here, it might work. Yeah, see, it doesn't, it pulls out, but it doesn't go in line with it or straight with it. So there's another one you can do if you want to be a little more specific. I'm going to go back here and change this to dimension. I'm going to use a lines. So then the little actually follow the angle of this, which might make it look a little bit better. So those are 0.2. And since there are 50 gear teeth, I can make the note off to the side, or I can just do double click, space, Oops, all the way to the right, space, sorry, capital X, 50. So the reader knows there are 50 of those. And this can be moved if I select this blue grip. I can move that back up there. There you go. Okay, so in all these other ones, I'm going to select linear. Make sure you're selecting now, not the center of the circle. So if I select the center of the circle to here, that yellow line covers up the crosshair. We do not want to cover up crosshairs, nor do we want to cover up uh, linear visible lines. So I'm going to select the end of the crosshair, the end of this crosshair. So now I have a nice gap there. So now we can differentiate the difference between a center mark and a dimension line. Do that all around. Make sure you're snapping these together. There's no need to make it out here, then move it later. Snap right to it the first time. Oop, I think I missed. End point, end points. There we go. Do that same thing down there. You can handle that on your own. Just make sure though that you're getting every single one here. So we have diameter, not diameter, sorry, right here, diameter circle. Select this outermost one. Then we have the one inside here. Actually, I don't like those there because your leader lines on these angled ones are supposed to be. I have about a 45 degree, so I'm going to go more about up here. So I'm going to select this. There we go. Now you want these to be on a nice angle. Make sure you get every single one of these. And for these ones with multiple of them, you can double click on that. Go to the right and do a space, capital X. I think that was 35. Get 35 of those. Select these. Cursor to the right. Times eight. At a nice angle. Got and then don't forget your construction line too. So just make sure that you go in here and you get every single one of these. It can seem to kind of clutter up a little bit. That's why I gotta be sure that we get every single one. I think that might do it. So make sure you look at your drawing and then double check the drawing in OneNote to be sure that you get every single one of these. I think I did get all of them. You don't need to put the 50 gear teeth since we just changed out this one in point 0.2 to make it 50. Now this drawing is centered and it can fit scaled one to one. So if I go to my layouts, double click inside, top view, double click back out and turn on my viewport layer. Turn that on. If you don't have your properties over here, maybe just do right click properties and it pulls this up. And right now my standard scale to one to one. I can double click back in here. I can center it a little bit. Get everything nice and even. Double click back out. Turn that off. Now be sure to change the name. Get your name in here. Last name, first name, all capitals, assignment number is A3. Alright, see you in the next video.